or <coughs> you're, we're just chatting. But uh, hello and welcome everybody to hello and welcome everybody to the full volume podcast. What's I up? am your I am your host, GI Jolie, and I am as always joined by Harvey Brent. Yes, and today, oh, today, I only lined the <laughs> in honor of today's episode of One Division. I only lined the outside of my lips. And the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of my eyes, um, in a tribute to the the late nineteen nineties and the early two thousands. It was perfect makeup, perfect for today. You you nailed it. I also left on my clearly over plucked eyebrows. <laughs> that is just like a legacy that many women are never gonna live down. Like thank Yikes. God for thank God for microblading. But anyway. <laughs> um, so in today's episode, we are discussing, as uh, as I said, WandaVision. Um, and this one is, oh God, if you were waiting, if you were waiting for a bomb to drop since like episode one, this is potentially um, the bomb, oh, the, a bomb and a little bit more. Well, I, I do think, yeah, this is this is a big one again. And um, I don't think it was as surprising as last week with the with Evan Peters cameo at the end of last week's episode. But this episode's huge because this is finally that episode that like raises the stakes and raises the threat. You know, like initially what was going on with this hex is that it was kind of like stationary. And, you know, there was obviously a lot of a lot going inside with Wanda you know, taking control of this town to relive her her utopian life that she wants. But this is the episode now where things start to get out of hand. And so that's, it's now like just in a, a traditional storytelling trope. This is where, you know, the threat is really visualized to us of like, ooh, okay, things are getting worse. Things are, mm -hmm. things are not going well. Um, and so, yeah, like it, I, I would call it a bomb. It is a bomb in a way, um, but not a surprise bomb like last episode. No, it's like um, it's it's you know what it's like the calm after the storm. It's the calm after, maybe not the calm after the storm, but the eye of the storm. Yeah. Where in the last episode, we kind of were. It was hinted at that maybe Wanda wasn't fully uh, responsible for everything that you, we see happening, and we all, I even kind of believed it because you see the appearance of, like her my favorite speedster <laughs> i mean <laughs> i love you ezra miller but i love you more evan peters um mm -hmm. so we we kind of we're left thinking that potentially somebody else is up to no good and wanda is just kind of capitalizing off of that um to make her life full and what she wants it to be and in this episode we're given a little more, um, given a little more life, um, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, we get a parody of, I didn't really watch Malcolm in the Middle. Me neither. I, yeah. <laughs> I heard it was, I heard it was good. Um, I, I, do you know what? Admittedly, I watched a couple episodes in order to try it, but I just was not, I didn't feel it. I was like more of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer type, obviously, yeah. because I'm a gigantic adult nerd. But I was like, I was, I wasn't like a sitcom type, but they, uh, I was, however, um, a Halloween special type. <laughs> if yeah. a show did a Halloween special, I was in. Like... Um, that's like that was like my favorite part of every television show growing up. watching every television show growing up is like oh boy it's the Halloween special this yeah. week and uh, and they they gave us everything we liked about a Halloween special um, we see Wanda in her Sokovian fortune teller outfit <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Vision um, Vision in his uh, they, they, they they're wearing all of their classic costumes as if they're their Halloween costumes and that is that was such a gorgeous piece of like detail that I just I die. Yeah. Um. So the the main plot is that uh, everyone's going out for Halloween. It's and a Vision. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no, it's a Halloween. I cut you off there, but it's the episode's definitely focused around Halloween. But I think 
um, yeah, like you said, sorry, uh, Vision is obviously up to a lot of suspicion in, in terms of his fight with Wanda at the end of last episode. Um, so I feel like it's just as much about Vision this episode as it is about, you know, what's going on with Wanda. There's there's finally that, like, duality in storytelling, you know, where we have two different, like, subplots within the hex. Yes, and I think we touched upon it before where we, um, when we were talking about how... Um, uh, when when Vision runs off to get the doctor, it's not part of the story. It's not yeah. part of Wanda's television story. So things are different. We see it from another perspective. And now, more than ever, um, we see Vision break off from the main plot of the television storyline and kind of do his own thing. Like, he tells... Uh, he's he's playing along with Wanda as well. Um, uh, she wants him to go out for Halloween with them. And he's like, well, I have, you know, I I'm going to go do something else. I have uh, neighborhood watch. That's it. I yeah. have neighborhood watch. And she's like, well, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And he's like, uh, he, he gave that same Agnes TV. Like I'm aware I'm on TV. Look. Yeah. And, uh, and was like, well, tough yeah <laughs> I, like that's just part of that's just part of living in this neighborhood and we find out later that uh in a really cute scene and every time they do a speedster scene with evan peters it's hilarious oh yeah they, it, they played it up for comedy so well this episode oh yeah i mean it wasn't like x-men hilarious uh it wasn't like x-men film hilarious but it was really hilarious um you and then Again, you see a lot more of the townspeople interacting with Wanda in a way that's like they're just being compliant. And then, and I don't know if you want to continue because I have a hard time describing what I saw when it cuts to vision. We finally see what's happening outside of the television frame with the other population of Westview. Yeah, that was so cool. Like it took me a minute to conceptualize, but basically anytime anybody's not on screen, any of the, the population's not on screen, they're basically just like frozen in space or very limited movement. And they're like, they're just tortured. Like there's like a woman trying to hang a skeleton for Halloween and she has very limited movement and she's just tears running down her eyes because she knows she's like a prisoner. So anytime these characters aren't being used in a scene, they're like frozen in space, which is crazy. Um, and such a great attention to detail. Um, I, I thought I found it interesting too because this is a Halloween episode, um, and trick or treating features in it a lot with Wanda's um, two sons. Um, that what we have is we finally get an explanation to where all the children are, which is like the children are kind of like removed, you know, outside of um, her usual scenes. Like the children are always kind of sequestered away. But this episode, she brings the children front and center for Halloween. So she like you know does her thing, and then they're they're you know. Uh, important background players um, so that was that was really fascinating but you're right Vision discovers all this and then he discovers Agnes in a car um, on the boundaries of the of the hex which to me um, without getting too much off the description of what's going on I'm a little confused now because I thought Agnes was complicit in all of this in terms of um, I thought she was some sort of outsider I thought maybe she had some sort of power and so I'm a little confused as to how Agnes fell under this this control of Wanda, to be honest. And I, th which is not a critique of the storyline. I'm just mm -hmm. confused by the rules. Still, I'm like, well, I thought I thought she was in on it, you know. So I'm I'm a little confused there. But what happens is, um, you know, Agnes finally spills the tea, the hot piping tea that Vision <laughs> is in fact dead. <laughs> um, but she, she, uh, you know, Vision first has to like release her from her control, and then she's like, "Oh, you're Vision from the Avengers, didn't you die?" Um, and then Vision all of a sudden sees, you know, past Ellis Street, past the boundary of the hex, he sees, you know, the, I don't know what you call it, like the glitching effects that show the boundary of the hex. And then he approaches it and tries to go through it, um, and so that leads to really like the big, um, you know. Plot, or plot point driving forward of this episode is that Wanda um, senses through her two boys that, you know, 
there uh, that Vision's in trouble. He's dying because on the other side of the hex, uh, Sword is just watching him get torn to pieces as he's trying to get through this barrier, uh, which is so rude. Um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then what? Ha- um, Wanda does what she does, and she just expands the barrier, and then that you know consequently saves Vision. But that has profound effects in the surrounding areas as well. She increases that size of the hex. And now, now I understand where all the budget went for this episode, because all of a sudden you see all of these things turn into like these very like, you know, these fancy diners and these like merry-go-rounds and these, uh, these circus items. I'm like, oh, that's where your budget went. Because they said every episode is 25 million. And I was like, first like three or four episodes, I was like, that's really, that's 25 million these days. I know inflation's a problem, but like, come on. Um, <laughs> but like there, this, there's some serious set design going on in the last like five minutes of this episode. So, um, yeah, no crazy, crazy turn of events. Um, and I, I apologize. I, I feel like I just kind of recapped the whole episode, but I did oh, leave no. out an important, um, side plot is about, um, just the dynamics, uh, between, Wanda and fun Uncle Pietro and the boys on their trick-or-treating route. So there's a lot that happens there. And then there's a lot that happens outside of the hex as well with uh, mm-hmm. Monica Rambo and Darcy and, and uh, Jimmy Woo. So um, there's just a lot going on in this episode. Yeah. And you know what? It's not it's not hard to follow and convoluted. And I read an article last night before I went to bed that was talking about how um, from... Uh, <laughs> The want that this show, WandaVision, is giving viewers and infusing the MCU with the emotion, emotional content that it needed, emotionally driven characters and an emotionally driven story. Because this, I mean, Captain America's, Captain America's story is very emotionally driven. I would argue that his is almost one of the only emotionally driven stories that I care about. I mean, his spans time, yeah. um, his his love story and, and and all of that, and the the end of his time as an Avenger. But in this story itself, it's like her love for Wanda's love for her children, who Peter yells. Did you catch when he yelled and called them demon spawns? Demon spawn? spawns, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, I knew it. Okay. And and it seems like Peter, or, or Pietro, is he's in on the conceit. Uh, but he's, like, really in on it. Yeah. Um, he knows he's dead. He knows Vision's dead. He's, like, hamming it up with his sister. He's, like, leveling, just leveling with her. The one part where he goes where he he asks her if she's okay like look you can talk to me i'm not your family i'm not your best friend and i'm not your husband i'm your brother like you can tell me where do you store these kids what is it what is it how how are you pulling this off like just tell me we're close we're twins yeah and uh and she it cuts the scene um, to maybe some some sword plot points um, before she can answer. And I was just really getting into that relationship, like the relational conversations they were, they were having. But um, that I, I totally agree with the person who wrote all of those opinions is that these are the kinds of relationships um, that... I would say all superheroes are missing and as cancelled as Joss Whedon is right now when he started to write for the Avengers he was putting that kind of character into his Avengers yeah and and it quickly got removed for more action and mm. you know big fight scenes but um, there's more vulnerability here yeah. Yeah. I, the, she becomes a character that, like, I want Wanda to win. I want Westview to suffer. I want her to be happy. I want to be there with her because I can see, I can see and empathize now with the emptiness that she felt. And it's like, no, she's just, you know, she's just being selfish, which we should all be selfish a little, <laughs> a little bit. But like... Yeah. Maybe not to the point where we capture a whole town and hold them hostage. I I can't do that. I don't have those kinds of magic powers, but yeah, 
I mean, we should all, like, we should all be able to, we should all be able to speak to each other. I don't really know where I'm going with this, but there is an emotional, there is something emotional driving this whole thing. It's grief. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, I was going to say, too, like, at one point, um, she says that she, like, after she lost everyone, she says in this episode um, that she felt just empty and, like, nothingness, I think she said. And so that, I think that kind of drove home the the rationale for what she's doing as well, as misguided as it is again. And we've talked about this in past episodes. Like, this is just a real, you know, exaggerated superhero um, exercise in grief, I feel like. And so mm -hmm. I, yeah, I... I get, I get, I love the gray, the gray area in this. I love that, you know, we, we're kind of rooting for Wanda, but at the same time, we know this is wrong. Like, it's a very interesting conversation to have. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's like going back to the vulnerability with Pietro and stuff too, though. I still don't fully know what to make of him. And I still feel like the questions that you and I talked about last episode with Mike, I still don't mm -hmm. know where they're going to go with Pietro as if he is actually Quicksilver from, from the X-Men universe, if he's a coincidental figment of her imagination, or if he is somebody, you know, that may be an imposter. Like, we don't... I still don't know what they're going to do with Quicksilver, but I, I also like that. Like, I, I'm i still not quite getting the answers I want in the time that I want, you know? Like, it's... They're, mm -hmm. they're just giving me little little trails, little morsels to follow the trails, you know? So it's... Uh, <laughs> oh, man. This, is, this has been really cool. Um, another mm -hmm. thing that I think it's important to talk about is Monica Rambo this episode. Um, oh yeah, they have started to hint that something is happening to Miss Rambo, um, which is that because on she's on a molecular been, level, on a molecular <laughs> level, yeah. And so I I noticed, yeah, Darcy says your cells are mutating, and then I got to thinking, just about I mean, for people that again that that um, are privy to the comics. Wanda is famously associated with a very um, famous arc called the House of M, where she depowers all of the mutants in the world. In the MCU, we don't have mutants. What if this is a reverse House of M, where people that are in that Westview radius, you know, in that hex, they're mutating their cells and she's creating mutants in this universe? Has anybody talked about that? Have we have we had that conversation? Because that makes sense. <laughs> we have not. We have not had that conversation. But that would um, not only one in my mind. I'm just assuming mutants live in the MCU and they we're just not talking about them. Oh. But it would be fan effing tastic if she if she were to birth give birth to all kinds of mutants would that wouldn't that be just the legacy her her actual father um craved wanted yeah totally <laughs> like so we're being introduced to this idea that things can be changed or changed to suit wanda's reality so now that we see that the hex is expanded we didn't really go into detail about was what was happening with Jimmy Darcy and Monica, but they, the three of them, really quickly to recap, have been ousted. Um, they have been mm, banished yep. from the sword encampment uh, for being too sympathetic to Wanda. Um, <clears throat> for, you know, not wanting sword to shoot her up and kill her. Because who knows what that would do? I don't know. An, uh, how about another terraforming, like, sort of a mass extinction effect? Like, you saw what happened to her in Sokovia. You know what happened to her. And you're going to shoot at her? Like, you're going to take all of her things away again? I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> so, um, so they actually sneak back into the, so they sneak back into the sword encampment. To, to glean more information and they find I think his name is Hampton the evil sword agent who's bent on killing yeah. is his name Hampton? Uh, it's something with an H and it's really going to bother me I apologize listeners I I don't think it's Hampton and it's not Hanson Hartf mm -mm. that's not Hartford ha <gasps> we'll figure it out well, we'll put it we'll put it later <laughs> motherfucker's evil so anyway yeah. um, they they hack Darcy's able to hack into the little computer system um, and find out that they've been he has privately been tracking Vision his uh, decaying vibranium 
mm-hmm. is that they they have the ability to track it and they've been tracking or keeping tabs on vision uh, which allows them the three of them conveniently to see that the vision is heading towards an exit yeah to the hex and Darcy, of all people, runs to the front and is like, he's dying. Don't you understand? Like, she sees him coming through. They all see him coming through. And they all have hazmat suits on, which tells me that they are they have something bigger brewing. They have something planned that's crazy. Um, And I think S.W.O.R.D. is in place to capture him and kind of take him back. To wherever, uh, to wherever Wanda stole him from. But Darcy gets caught up in the fray, and the hex, when it gets bigger, envelops the entire sword encampment. Yeah. And Darcy. So, yeah. does Darcy become a mutant? I don't know. <laughs> I, I hope don't know. so. I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited. Again, this is all speculation, people. Um, yeah. But like. It would be a very smart way, first of all, to bring mutants into the MCU if they haven't already. Just acknowledge that they exist. This is a great way to do it. Well, I think it's going to divide a lot of people. A lot of people purists are going to hate the fact that House of M happens the opposite way. I think it's clever, though, given the circumstances. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, this this next episode is going to be interesting. I did want to touch on um, something that... Again, because we're talking about Wanda's motives and Pietro's motives, everybody's motives, which, again, I'm not even sure. The only person I'm sure on the, at this point is Wanda. Everybody else's motives I'm, I'm very unclear on. Um, but I, we've talked about this a couple times, and we've talked about how this could be the work of Mephisto or Nightmare or someone. I, I don't know now necessarily because we have three episodes left. I don't know going forward if we're going to see... A manifestation of a villain like this could still be the work of a villain like Mephisto or someone but I feel like it's only going to be implied by the end of this miniseries I don't think they're gonna cast someone and I don't think it's you know what I mean like they're not gonna defeat him or any of that I think it'll just be somewhat implied by the end of WandaVision that you know this there was some sort of manipulation going on um, and maybe we'll get a name you know maybe we'll get that name Mephisto but I don't. I actually don't think there will be any confrontation at this point. I think you're right when you said earlier that the main confrontation we're going to get is with Sword, and with the mm-hmm. the Sword, um, the highest up Sword agent, who again, whose name I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, but I think that's going to be the main confrontation. I don't think Mephisto will manifest itself in a physical form for us to see. I I just think it's kind. Of, we're kind of long in the tooth at this point. You know, we only have three mm-hmm. episodes left to like really get a villain out there and introduce them and all that so i i don't know how this is gonna go yeah and you know what i i both hate it i hate not knowing and i love it i hate not knowing um based on my comic knowledge where this is going it's like i can't i can't speculate to death where this could possibly be going but also i love speculating to death where this could be going because it could be going anywhere at this point and Right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to... I know that the Scarlet Witch is a main character in Doctor Strange. Yeah. So what what I my, my mind is trying to do is logically connect the two of the events of this story to what they could possibly be doing in that story. But then my mind is shutting off and, and allowing itself to just fucking enjoy this show. And it is... Ugh, it is so... It's just such a pleasure to enjoy. I really hope that they don't. um, Like you said, I agree. I don't think that we're going to get, I don't think that we're going to see a villain. Um, I think we're going to get just, just a soup song of a villain at the end. And then, um, and then we're going to be left hanging, which is fine with me. I don't want them to take the boys away. I love that we have a little Wiccan and... A little speedster. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cute. And I really, I really, really hope that somehow Vision and Pietro make it through this. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting, too. Like, I... Vision, I logically, I could see them carrying forward in some form. 
I don't know what they're going to do with Pietro, though, again, because we don't have those answers yet. I'm like, I still don't know if he's an imposter. Like, what the heck is he? Is he truly... Mm-hmm. Like, he, he claims to be Aaron Taylor Johnson, though, because he said he was shot up on the street, which is what happened to Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver in um, Age of Ultron. So that's that's what I'm just like, I'm racking my brain. Like, he's he's not claiming to be from the X-Men universe. So mm-hmm. what is he? Like, you know, or did, did Wanda give the X-Men universe's Pietro... Aaron Taylor Johnson's memories like it's just I don't know where they're going with it and again I'm pleased with that but I'm also Mm -hmm. like it's driving me crazy (laughs) oh yeah and like um I think they tried to maybe and maybe the answer is much simpler than we all hope or want it to be because in that conversation they were having together where she's like quizzing him to see if she's like you don't trust me still do you (laughs) of course you don't think I'm real but you brought me here of course I'm real like I'm as real as you want me to be. Yeah. I heard your voice. I knew you needed me. And here I am. Uh, and it's 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 going to be depressing if, just like Vision, she's just resurrected these people at, to be part of her, her conceit and her story. But it's going to be really awesome if somehow she has the powers of resurrection because I, I want more of these characters. I want Paul Bettany, and I want Evan Peters back. Um, oh, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he was like, he was like, well, what happened to your accent? Well, what happened to your accent? Yeah, like, like it's just... But the th- same thing, though, is too, if this truly is a story about grief, the last stage of grief is acceptance, which you would think would imply that acceptance is letting go of these, of these dead people in your life. So I don't know which way they're going to go with this. Again, maybe this story mm-hmm. isn't about grief. So maybe that's not a point, but I'm just saying for a character arc of grief, in this context, you would expect the end of grief, the acceptance stage, to be letting go of Vision and to let go of Quicksilver. But there's, yeah. again, I don't know what, what they're going to do with this. They could throw us a curveball. They could keep both. They could keep one. They could kill both again. Who knows? Like it's they just... all, I mean, they almost killed one. Yeah, I Vision's almost was... dead again. <laughs> I thought he was toast. I was like, okay, cool. He's, he's Owen too for life. Yeah, he keeps dying <laughs> on us in his movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh God. I, I just had a thought about Agnes too. I feel like the people that are closest to her. So she's cast as the role of best friend. Yeah. That she um, maybe she becomes Agatha Harkness outside of the show, but the reason that she seemed to be in on the joke is that you see her more frequently. So her, the person, yeah. yeah, the person who's been trapped, the Agnes who has been trapped is able to move freely, more freely about the city because there's more potential for Wanda to interact with her. Yeah. Just like when we see Herb, Herb. Yeah. Yeah. Herb, Herb on the corner doing his neighborhood watch thing in his, sweet ass Frankenstein costume. That was dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the best. But yeah. So uh, I mean we we've hit all the we've hit all the most important points, I think. Um we've touched on the only Easter egg that's important and which makes me feel like we're going to see if we're not gonna see Mephisto after three these three episodes, we're gonna see him in the future. Um Demon Spawn. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that that's it. I mean he's got a factor into this. I just don't know how and when and to what extent. Mhm. That's there's there's so many questions still. But again, we're liking this for for the li- people that are listening and watching this. We're liking that mm-hmm. it's not treating us like a a typical dumb audience. Like it's making us work for it. It's making us think about it. It's layered. And this again like we haven't really had the opportunity to do that with Marvel movies. Uh, because mm-hmm. of their format, but now that we're getting these these mini series, we let these these observations breathe. You know, we let this these plot points breathe, and it's 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 worked out in spades. Like this has just been such a dope ride for the past like six episodes. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like I can't I uh, I can't say whether or not we'll be reviewing the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We, we could. I'm not as enthusiastic about it, but maybe no. who will see. I mean, I, I did see they're bringing back Daniel Bruhl, which, you know, I'm into that. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, sorry. I'm just... 
Yeah. If it's not Evan Peters, it's Daniel Brule. Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I mean, I'm a huge Tarantino fan. Oh, yeah. And uh, his character in Glorious Bastards, jeepers. Anyway. Yeah. That's another. That's uh, that's another podcast. We really maybe we do have to do it after dark. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, I. Do you know what? I I am I'm entertained. I am happy. Um, I haven't been this happy since Walking Dead was good. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's man. the last time I felt alive. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Not only uh, am I entertained, I am edutained. Like they're oh. teaching me stuff about this universe. And they're teaching me about. Not, I mean, not that I wasn't privy to it, but they're teaching me about past cinema and stuff, too. Like, this is a clever little program you made, Marvel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with that, I would like to invite anyone who has their own theories to send them to us or pop them down in the comments below. Um, we are full, vo- of, uh, it's at fullvolumepod at gmail.com. Um, nothing yet, but I anticipate anger soon um we've only we're only two episodes deep in the real online world but uh yes send us uh send us love letters it is valentine's day as we're filming this after all we could use the send love us, yeah oh i mean come on um <laughs> this uh they, they just lifted our lockdown so we could really use the love yeah. um uh you can follow us on uh online on twitter uh by tweeting at Comic Syndicate hashtag full, t- full volume pod, uh, and you can catch more episodes of this and other comic book syndicate shows and other comic book syndicate podcasts at www.comicbooksyndicate.com. But for now, I have been your host GI Joe Lee, and I've been Harvey Brent, as he always will be, <laughs> and we will see you on the next episode. Keep it loud. Happy V-Day, folks. <laughs> <laughs>